All right, guys, congratulations on your purchase of the Garmin Striker 4. Now, my assumption is, is either this is your secondary fish finder for ice fishing, or this is you bought this because you want it for ice and open water, or maybe you're just breaking in and you want to try something with electronics. Either one of those options is great. That's why everyone tells you to go with the Garmin Striker 4. Fun fact, I used to have one of these. I bought the ice fishing bundle, uh, and then I upgraded and stupidly got rid of it. But here we are, back at it with it again, because I did really like it when I had it the first time. So I've watched a bunch of videos on YouTube, and I was trying to figure out how to set this up for ice fishing. Uh, I watched an hour worth of videos, and I didn't, and I'm, I'm gathering all of that information, and I'm going to help it with you guys. So what we are going to do is we're going to take this thing from the box to the ice and reeling up a fish and I'll show you guys how to do all of that. Now I'm not going to show you guys a lot of the features this thing has because the only thing I knew how to use was the flasher mode because that's all I cared about. So if you're watching this video to learn more about how to use this thing, sorry, I don't know the electronics portion of it. I'm just going to get it so you can catch some fish. Let's do that. Let's get dusty. Okay, but now before we start getting into it, let's figure out what we're going to need to make this thing work. So obviously you got your box, you open it and you get all of this fun stuff so you get the mount for the unit itself that just clips in the back clip that there you go you got this uh, this is your power wire all you're gonna need is the red with the fuse on it and then your black and those are what you're gonna hook to your battery now you're gonna use to hook those to your battery I've got I don't know the name of these I know they're a female electrical connection you're gonna need two of those okay so obviously we're going to crimp those onto those two wires and then it also comes with your transducer. So this part is your actual transducer and this part is what, come on John, get closer to the camera here. So what you're going to want is you want this piece to lay flat along the bottom of the water. So we get, that's what we're going to build. We're going to build a transducer mount, but what else do we need? So you cheaped out, you just bought the box, you're also going to need a 12 volt battery so I got this 12 volt lithium the 7 amp hour battery off Amazon for like 30 bucks you don't have to go lithium lithium apparently is just better and lighter um, but you can get uh, other options for like 20 you can figure that out but you are gonna need that 12 volt battery also then what you're gonna need is <clears throat> you need some kind of case or something to hold everything in and that is where the ammo box comes in I didn't want to go ammo box but because everyone else does and I want to be different, but honestly, it seems to be like the easiest and best way, best solution for this. And then what you're going to do with that is you're going to attach the unit on top. And I'm going to use these 832 half inch little bolts. We'll use those. And then I have three, three quarter inch PVC tees and a section of three quarter inch PVC. You probably could go half inch with the PVC, but I just had the three quarter laying around. That is what I know you need. If there's anything else that I think I need, I'll add that in right here. And you're going to need one. This is a 8 by 32 whatever that means, that size. You don't need three inch. You need one and a half. I cut mine down. You'll need that. And then two small washers. And that is going to be the setup that actually attaches the bottom of the transducer to the transducer mount that you're making. All right. So now let's get to building. All right, so now before we start hacking up the PVC for our transducer mount, think about the thickness of the ice that you normally fish on. So for me, I normally fish on about six to eight inches of ice. So I'm gonna cut my transducer mount, and this will be the part that actually sticks in through the ice into the water that holds the transducer. I'm gonna cut mine at 16. Again, I fish about eight to 10 inches of ice. If you fish a lot thicker of ice, you are going to need to go longer. The beauty of this setup though, is if you end up realizing that you went way too big or you went way too small, it's just a matter of cutting new PVC and fitting it all in. So now with that being said, let's cut some PVC. All right, so what I did is I ended up cutting four pieces at about four inches, and then I cut two pieces at three inches, and then I cut the one at 16. Now you're gonna get all kinds of burr and debris on this. You can clean that up with a deburring tool. However, I just put my finger in there and do this little guy right here. Takes all the nasty stuff. You can cap the ends of these if you wanted to spend the money on the caps. I don't really care, because it's gonna get wet. It's gonna get full of water if you cap it. You're gonna, you might end up having a spot where ice is going to actually form inside. 
I'm just gonna let it all drain out, don't really care. So what you're gonna do here is you got these three T's. So uh, I'm gonna take my small two, my small three inch pieces, I'm gonna put them in the ends just like so, okay? That one's done. And then I'm gonna take the four inch pieces, do the same thing in the other T's. Again, I'm not gonna glue it all because I do want this thing to be able to spin and kind of almost pack up a little tighter. So now you got three pieces like this. Take the one with the small short pieces, Put that in the middle, smash her together, give her two just to be fun. Take your 16 inch piece. We might, we're might we gonna take this one back out, but just for reference, this is what we got. So then you fold these out, transducer's gonna sit down here, and then so this is gonna fit right over your hole. Now I fish with a eight inch hole, and this thing right here with the dimensions that I told you, overall is nine inches wide and nine and three quarter inches tall so this will work for an eight inch hole if you're going with a with a 12 inch hole go a little bit bigger and if you're going with a six you could go a little smaller but i think this is probably a good size now let's work on getting this transducer actually mounted to this piece we want the transducer to mount to the bottom of our mount um but you can see with using the three quarter it doesn't fit beautifully on there it's actually just about as wide as it um i think if you use half inch it might slide right over but what we're going to do, because again, I said I had the three quarter, is I'm going to melt, I'm going to make it pliable. Mm -hmm. Make the end of this thing pliable to the point where I can squish it in, and then I'll be able to use it to do that. Just watch and learn. Also would recommend gloves and channel locks. All right, so this step is unnecessary, but I'm going to do it because I think it's going to give it a little cleaner look and you're going to be fighting with cables a little less on this. So what I'm going to do is through the top of this little H section or I section, depending on your way you look at it, I'm going to drill a hole big enough through the center of this thing that I will actually be able to feed that transducer cable up through and out the top here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take and we're going to slide that transducer right over that melted down PVC. Kind of get it to where you think you're going to want it. Take your drill. I would suggest get it start, get the hole started. And now take your cord and feed it up through the bottom of where you just drilled that hole. All right, so once your cord is all set and through, what you're gonna do is take this and then line it up with your hole. Take that one and a half inch uh, bolt and drive it all, where did it go, George? All the way through. Washer on the other side. I hope you will, at this point, understand how washers and nuts work. You get that on. And before you get it really tight down, <clears throat> you wanna try to have it where if it sits, if it sits flat, you basically want that at about a 90 degree angle and tighten that down so that we know once this is on the ice, this will sit flat with the bottom. And now take your H or I section, put your transducer cable back through that hole that you drilled at the top, pull all of your cable through, put it back together, and there you are. Now in order to attach this thing and power it up to the battery, all you need is those little clips that I showed you earlier. And you already have the black and red wires already stripped for you. Literally, you're just going to slide them on there, crimp it on there. That'll allow you to be able to connect to your battery. But now we're able to hook this up to the battery, which then hooks it up to this. So now what we got to do, though, is now that that's ready to be hooked up, we need to figure out how we're going to do everything with the box portion of it. But the battery itself inside the case is, is going to be kind of my important thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the layered foam that came with the battery during shipping to hold the battery in place. So all I'm going to do is, because if you do it, it's going to be too big, because I want to cram everything in here. And if you use that foam the way it is, 
it's too big. So what I'm gonna do is that layered foam, I'm gonna pull off the bottom couple layers of the foam, and then it's gonna allow me to have just one layer of foam, and I'm gonna hot glue this foam in place in the bottom of the box, and therefore it'll give my battery a place to sit. Okay, all right, that, so what I just told you didn't work. So what I had to do was I had to actually, I peeled off the layers of the foam, and I had to cut the back section off so it can sit all, so your battery will sit all the way up against the box. And now I'm just gonna hot glue that in so it doesn't move around, and then your battery should be pretty stabilized, so everything's gonna sit pretty tight in the box. Again, so I'm going to mount the unit on the top of the box. So I'm going to use the plate, the mounting brick plate that's on there. I'm going to get it where you want it. I still want to be able to put the handle up. Maybe not necessarily use the handle, but we're going to put it up there. And then I'm just going to drill holes in those three, three pre-drilled hole areas. Got that. Then I'm going to take those small bolts that I talked about earlier, and we're going to run those through. And we're just going to bolt it to the top. And finally, the last modification you need to do to your box to make this thing work is you need to be able to get your cables to run from the inside battery to the back of the unit. Um, you could drill a hole and then plug it in every single time. I'm just gonna slit up the side and make it so that I can set the cord through and still close the box. <clears throat> now I'm gonna do that with by dr probably drilling a hole, maybe cutting it, there we go, maybe cutting it with some other thing. Alright, so this thing's all set up, ready to go. Um, I did tr take all the transducer cable and I put it to the top of the transducer mount just so it's out of the way. I zip tied it so we're all clean there. Um, if you're going to do it like how I'm going to do it when I run it in and out from the ice, I'm going to have to unplug the transducer cable every single time. And then it's, it's just simply that. And now this will be separate. And then again, then the unit goes inside the box. No worries there. Or if you wanted to, when you were brave enough, you can just leave it like this and just carry this thing out like this. And you're gonna be fine too. But now that it's all set up, let's actually use it. Let's go and start doing some fishing. So here's how this thing looks all set up. Transducer in the water. And then there is your flasher. Uh, I still gotta play with it to get the settings a little bit better. But it does catch fish. Um, one thing I will say is I saw someone online, they took those uh, snap-in things that you use for like uh, shovels or, any, or rakes, those things that just snap to the wall. They had those in the back and that's what they used to hold the transducer to the back here. So that works, so I'm just gonna keep fishing. but. That's how it works. So I hope you guys learned something from this. Hope this was very valuable for you and you figure out how to set up. Like I said, we went from unboxing to a fish on the ice. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.